But, you know, as far as this, I think this works surprisingly well for just, you know, how simple it is. Uh, it, it does a pretty good job. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your pal, Possible I'm here, and we are back in Besiege. Oh my god, it's been a long time since we've been in Besiege. But I got a good comment from somebody named Donatella, and she said, uh, I assume it's a she, sorry if I'm wrong. Uh, why don't you do an active suspension? And I thought, why don't I do an active suspension? I don't think I've ever actually conquered a task like that in Besiege. Uh, I've not played Besiege and ever been looking for an excuse to get back in here. So let's start working on an active suspension. That just sounds fun and interesting to me. So let's get going on that. Uh, in case you're wondering, you're not quite sure what an active suspension is. Uh, most suspensions you see in like cars and trucks and stuff are, are, are passive. Basically, they're springs that just push the, push the wheels down to accommodate for bumpiness and stuff. But with an active suspension, your wheel actually will try to reach out and touch the ground, essentially. And... Uh, Basically, it, try, it tries to keep as much contact on the floor as possible. I'm like talking with my hands right now. Sorry about that. I think, you know, I stopped actually moving stuff in the game. It was like, yeah, I'll just talk with my hands. They'll see what I'm talking about. Obviously not. All right. And uh, so with active suspension, it tries to basically, the, the wheels will be pushed in and out or whatever to try to keep the car level, essentially, with as much contact on the ground as possible. That's it in a nutshell, essentially. All right, let's go in here. We're going to use, we're, we will be using a piston, but for right now, I'm looking for, why can't I find the spring? There we go, suspension. I was looking for it in the name spring. I don't know why, but I was, I just was. All right, there we go. We got a thing there. Let's throw, yeah, let's throw another hinge on here. I haven't really practiced this, by the way. I just have sort of an idea of what I want it to do, and I'm hoping we'll get there, <laughs> essentially. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So this is not something that's been refined, you know, a million times and works perfectly and is going to be like the most amazing thing in the universe. Basically, it's a proof of concept to give you guys an idea of how something like this could be tackled. So you can make something, you know, even better yourself if, if you really wanted to, you know, totally. You could totally do that. If I can do it, anybody can do it. That's what I always say. All right, be something like that, maybe. I'm going to take this and tip it back this way-ish. Yeah, that, that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and put a piston on here. Like so. Yeah, that, that'll work-ish. I'm not sure how perfect that is, but you know what? I can live with it. And let's go ahead and put a brace on here. So we're going to brace this to the, uh, the main block here. There we go. And that should... I'm trying to think of all the connections in my head. This should work, essentially. This should be the first wheel. Hopefully. Let's pin this the uh, let's pin it to the ground for right now. Onto the air rather, so I don't have to worry about things moving on me. Let's put a wheel on here. Uh put a big old powered wheel on here for now. Like that. Let's get this rotated so it's somewhat level it's probably not going to be perfect but something better than that would be great hopefully that connects good i might just lift it up just a little tiny bit oh god that, that lifted way too much let's uh bring down the resolution here let's just put like 0 0.1 or something that'll, that'll be fine for me just lift it up a little tiny bit right there let's see if this works do you fall apart no good let's go in here and turn on drag objects Make sure this actually has suspension. It does. It suspends like suspension is supposed to. But now look what happens when I hit H. Oh, it reaches out to touch the ground. There is the active part of the active suspension. So when it's passive, you know, we hit bumps, we go like this. When it's active, we can reach out. There we go. That is pretty much the, uh, the main mechanism here. Let's go ahead and, uh, well, we'll get out of uh, play mode. We'll put this on... Uh, regular mode let's go ahead and just copy this up i think we have most of what we want here so let's just go ahead and select everything here like that and duplicate and mirror on the x-axis there we go and we're just gonna have to move it a little bit so that it lines up in the same spot there ish i hope i have that lined up perfectly it could be a little bit off I guess we'll find out eventually, won't we? And uh, basically, we're going to just do that same thing again, but moving on down the other way. So let's go ahead and grab all this. Whoops. Accidentally let go. And let's duplicate it. Except for this one, we can just drag back. We don't have to do anything silly with it. There we go. 
and I don't have to do anything special with it. Let's just go ahead and do that. We'll connect these two, uh, two different halves. We'll have to set up some logic and stuff soon. You know, definitely we're going to get it. We're going to be getting into logic stuff. That's probably where a lot of the uh, confusing aspect of this might be for people if they're not quite comfortable with how logic works. Uh, but, you know, we're, we'll get a very simple system going. If you guys want to iterate on it and make it the most coolest thing ever, that is your, you know, your opportunity. You can do that. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this mass up a little bit. I'm hoping I can get a little bit of sag in these wheels, at least a little bit. We can always add in more ballast if we really want, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. And let's just uh, make sure the world doesn't fall apart. Let's actually get rid of these things here. I don't need them now. All right. Put you down. You have suspension. I get it forward and back. I don't have... Uh, this will be tank steering, by, by the way, but right now it's just like this. And I hit H. Yep, it, it goes up on stilts. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now we get into the fun logic stuff. So basically, if uh, let's say, for example, this side is leaning up as if, uh, you know, it's going over a hill just with this side, then this side right here should push down to try to level the vehicle. That is the plan. So we'll do it uh, left and right and front and back. So we have to set up the uh, logic for this. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw down some blocks that I can just shove logic blocks onto because we don't actually have a whole lot of things to attach to here. So let's just go like, I don't know, I'll just build back like this and then I doubt they'll line up perfectly. So I'll probably have something weird here. Do we have it? Yeah, I don't have it quite lined up perfectly. That's all right. We'll just have a, I think I'd rather have it go back more actually. Let's just go like this. There we go. Move this one back until they actually uh, connect properly to the back right there. I think that'll connect. I guess we'll see. Yep, that connected. There we go. Let's go ahead and uh, complete this connection to the front. That way it's not super wobbly. The smart thing would just move the front or the back until it fits perfectly. But I never claim to be the smart person. You know, it's just, you know, we're not doing things the smart way. That's how we do things here. All right. Let's see what we got going here. Well, let's start off with some... Uh, basically, we're going to be using entirely angleometers, I think. Uh, one thing I am going to do is try to give us as much... The mechanical advantage essentially is possible on these. So let's go ahead and put some uh, sensors all the way out at the edge, essentially. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of the uh, extras here. So one of those is extra on either side. We'll just hold these up with bracers. This is a uh, you know pretty standard uh, building type stuff. Uh, you can honestly just hold it up with one if you want. I think I will, actually. I usually like to really go crazy with over... Uh, fortifying everything, but these are literally just going to be holding sensors. Uh, if they break off, uh, just repair. <laughs> I mean, you, you could quadruple brace that, but at the end of the day, I don't think it really much matters. Uh, let's go ahead and throw some sensors on here, like I've been talking about. And we're going to want angleometers. And essentially, we're going to want this one to see if I can get a good view of it. Rotate it until it looks right. There we go. And get one over here. Having a hard time getting a good look at it. There we go. And now we want to set these up so that they are in the red zone. Like, say, the one over here will be in the red zone if this end gets picked up. And the one over here will be in the red zone if this end gets picked up. Essentially, that is the plan. And I'm uh, having a hard time finding a good view for you guys. There we go. We'll try something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and move this over. So let's have this at, like, 3 degrees. Like, I don't want it to get, like tipped off and go off you know off of nothing but at the same time i kind of do want it to trip you know something without going all the way over so you know there's a there's a zone you have to look for there the other problem is we don't have any kind of resolution in the deployment of our action so basically what, I, what i'm trying to say is when we put when we push the wheel down to try to make contact it's pushing as far as we can go unfortunately we don't have you know let's you know we only need you know quarter uh, you know progression there. It doesn't matter. It'll go down all the way. So that's something to consider as well Maybe it'll be too bouncy if we uh, trigger this too easily. We'll have to we'll have to play with it a little bit uh, Let's see. Let's get this one going over here and Let's see. All right, it's gonna have to be something like I may have to turn this around to make me happy to be honest Let's put this one down here have the max be negative three maybe Yeah, something like that so now, if I'm doing things properly, which you can never know for sure, uh, if I pick up this end on here, this needle should go into the red. 
And it does. It slowly goes towards the red, which will activate our shocks, which we do not have everything all lined up yet. We got we got more stuff we have to do first. I'm just testing to make sure everything I have is actually working as of now. All right, so now we need two more sensors. They're basically the same thing. These are doing the left to right. Now we're going to need the front to back, essentially, is what we're doing now. So let's go automation, angleometer, uh, one of them. I'll put here, like that. And the other one I will put back here. There we go. And let's see here. This one we want to... Uh, Basically, we want to, uh, the, if the needle goes to the left, we want it to trigger. That's essentially what we're going for here. So we'll do the same thing we had set up before. So like, was this negative three, I think, and like 180, I think? Did I do 180? Something like that. What about negative 180? That might be a thing. You know, it does the exact same thing. Okay, that's, that's not, you know, I think I, I think I did it the other way around. I think this one was negative three I did last time. Yeah, there we go. And this one will be 180-ish. Uh, there we go. That's what we we're looking for. I just had to, you know, switch around and min in the max. And this one, like I said, when we pick this up, it should go into the red if we pick up the front. And it does. It's exactly what we're looking for. Very good. I always, I always like to do little mini tests to make sure everything that I think is happening is actually happening. Uh, otherwise, you get further on and you're like, oh, I thought this happened. I thought this happened. You have this long chain of events that you thought were going to happen. And it's like, oh, none of that is working like I thought it was going to work at all. And it's uh, it's not very nice you run into something like that. And uh, this one, uh, it should be 3 and 180, I believe. Let's go. Let's see if we lift this up. Does it go into the red? It does not. See, I did it wrong. I'm a horrible, horrible knower of things. All right, let's put this one at 180 then. I could switch this one around to the other side, but it really doesn't matter. We can just leave it like this. Uh, I want this to be negative 3, actually. There we go. And if we want to make this more or less sensitive, we change the small number, essentially. So we want it to be less sensitive, we change the small number to be negative 5. We want it more sensitive, you know, change it to like 1 or something. All right, let's see. Does this act the way I think it was acting now? Yes. All right, it activates. Very good. Uh, now we have some other things we have to do. I'm trying to remember. This is the front of the vehicle. At least as far as our orientation is. That's the starter block. Let's go ahead and rename all of these. I'll reassign all these to uh, num numbers on the num key here. And I'm going to keep it, you know, one, two, three, four, just for simplicity's sake. There we go. Whoop. Did I do that in the last one too? No, I assigned. I actually assigned it properly last time. Very good. Uh, now we just need some ore blocks, essentially. And, uh, you know, uh, one for each wheel, I think. So we're going to have four ore blocks. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let's get some logic gates down. So, one, two, three, four. I wanted to space them out at least a little bit. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but you know what? Stuff happens. Uh, I should also actually make these uh, output things. <laughs> I don't have these actually uh, set to any special outputs at the moment, so I should probably do that. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna. I'm probably going to hate myself for doing this. I'm going to set this one to five. U to six and uh, U to seven and U to eight. There we go. Now those will activate when they're uh, when they're actually triggered by being you know too far to the side. And this one is going to be uh, two 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 two. Uh, this is for the front left wheel. Let's say so. This is going to be emulate key press one. And if this is going to be emulated, if this one, which is now number seven. So if number seven, I have to make this an or, by the way. If number seven is triggered or, uh, or this one over here is triggered, five. So seven or five, it gets activated. Can I, can I click you? There we go. And this will activate one. All right. This one will be for the front right one. So this will be seven because it's the front like last time. And this is six. Yeah, it's six. Okay, I actually remembered that. I'm kind of amazed. So seven or six. And the right wheel will be uh, pushed down. Hopefully. And I have to actually have this activate two. Did I do that? Did I forget that for the other one? No, I did. All right. This is going to be the back left wheel. So let's put this on three already. 
And this is for the rear sensor, which I have over here. So if eight, let's see if I can get it clicked again. So if eight is activated or the left side, which is five, there we go. They don't, whoop, I have to change that to five, not six. There we go. And the last one here should also be eight and six, I think. I'm going to double check on that. Because, uh, like I said, I have the memory of the goldfish. I can't help myself. Uh, and that should be everything. Let me make sure all these are set up properly. That's one, two, three. This one was not. Four. Now let's save. Call it active suspension. There we go. Yeah, whatever. Good enough. All right. Let's see if this works. We don't actually have steering set up properly or not. But, you know, I can drag it around and just see how things work. All right, now let's start by pushing up here. I am not seeing suspension being activated right now. Let's see what's happening. If I'm pulling up here, you should be triggered in the back. You are triggered in the back, but I see nothing. You know what? I have half of these set up as AND gates still, I bet you. This is an OR gate. This should be an OR gate. Yeah, these should all be OR gates. There we go. I'm hoping that was all that I did wrong, but there's a good chance it wasn't. All right, let's see what else we have going on here. Now, if I pick you up, do things happen? Things are still not happening. That's not expected. Actually, the exact opposite of what I think should be happening is happening. Did I get things messed up? I very well might have, because the back, as you can see, is pushed up. But the, the front should be the one actually pushed up. Oh man, I got things backwards. I'm I'm a goober. All right, let's let's start by mixing things around. So now we're going to want this one to be 8 and 8. This is going to be 7 and 7. Let's see how that goes. Does this work the way we want it to now? Yes, the front you see the front wheels pushed down to try to level the bed and now it's back fine again. Front wheels pushed down to try to level and they drop down, back down again. That's exactly what we want. Let's see if I switch to right and left around too. There's a good chance. Yep, I did. Okay, well, we can we can fix that. I can't believe I did that. I'm so horrible about doing that. All right, so we're going to have to switch five and six around. So if it was a five, it needs to be a six. And if it's a six, it needs to be a five. There we go. You'd be surprised how often I do this kind of silly stuff. It happens. All right, let's see if this works properly now. Does So if I pick up this side, the left side should push down and have longer wheel base, essentially. And it does. Very good. Very good. And we actually didn't crash, which was good. We'll pick up the right, uh, the left side, and hopefully the right side will try to compensate. Uh, we didn't pick it up very good, did we? Let's pick it up like this. There we go. There we go. And it's actively pushing down to try to level the vehicle. That is essentially it. Let's have a little fun with it first. Though. First off, let's actually make this thing like drivable. Uh, let's make it faster. Faster is more fun. I'm going to set this up as very simple take steering. So it's going to be, see the right side is going to be Y and H. And we'll copy that and paste this over here. And this one will be uh, T and G probably. I'll fix this in just a second. This will be T. And G, there we go, copy that. There we go, very simple tank steering. Let's give it a go. That's, all right, yep. Works like I would think it worked. Let's actually try going over a small hill and seeing if we actually activate our uh, active suspension or not. I'll go over this one slightly to the left here and see if we can activate it on this little little hill here. Ugh. Go for, I, I can't control this thing for nothing. It's not the vehicle's fault, that's totally me. All right. Are we going? Our, our left side is completely triggered. I mean, our right side is completely triggered because the left side is going up a hill. So it basically, it just does its best to try to keep the uh, the vehicle's body level as it can. But obviously, you know, I only have so much give I can do. And if you watch, if we go forward and back, like I'm going to go really fast forward and then go back. It actually pops out the front wheels to help it from spinning over so much. But unfortunately, we still spun over. Let's get this one over again. And uh, basically, you can do a lot of things with this kind of stuff. And obviously, why are we not going backwards there? 
I, th I think my hands are just a little bit off the uh, off the keys. That was my fault. Anyway, this is a very basic, you know, active suspension. It does a little bit, you know, it does exactly what you expect. You could do, you could fine tune this like a million percent, uh, you know, ch play with the logic, try to make it so it only, you know, activates a little bit if you're only a little bit off center. You know, all this, all this other kind of things. Maybe add in the double piston suspension. Anything you want, but this is a basic implementation of it. It works fine. It does what you think it would work. And if you guys want to improve on it, and you want to show me the cool things you guys are doing, I would love to see it. But, you know, as far as this, I think this works surprisingly well for just, you know, how simple it is. Uh, it, it does a pretty good job. I would love to, uh, I'd actually like to make like a monster truck or something, skin this up properly at some point. Maybe we can do that in another episode and have some fun with it. Anyway, guys, this has been, uh, you know, Passive Suspension on Besiege. If you're interested in stuff like this, I'll have a link down in the description. You can check out Besiege for yourself. It is an amazing game. And, uh, yeah, it's basically one of the games that really got me into the uh, building engineering vehicle genre. So, you know, I, I can't recommend it enough. You guys are new to this channel. is what I do. I play indie games every single day on the internet for your enjoyment. I uh, play vehicle engineering games like this one here. Uh, you know, Besiege and Trailmakers, uh... World of Contraptions, stuff like that we've been playing around. And uh, let me see, we play base building automation games and uh, tower defense games. So if you're into stuff like that, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click that bell icon so you know when I put out new content. Smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.